Hello, I'm Tiffany. I'm the marketing coordinator at ATE. This video on setting up and using our portable trailer lift has been produced for guidance purposes only. We're not qualified trainers in the use of lifting equipment or in manual handling. So all actions and suggestions are provided in good faith and should be taken in context. The lift is not designed for outdoor use. And if you're unsure about anything, please seek your own professional advice. Before proceeding to set your lift up, ensure that you're on a level, unbroken and hard surface. You will receive your lift in two boxes, a large flat box containing the lift and all the accessories and a smaller box containing the power pack and lift operation manual. Please remove one from the other using a suitable lifting device. You peel back several metal tags dotted around the edge of the box and remove the lid. Place the lid safely out of the way and collect all of the loose components inside the box, which will consist of lifting pads, riser posts, two lift arms and the packaging. Once all of the loose items have been removed, secure a lifting sling to each corner of the lift ensuring that the rating is suitable to lift in excess of 400 kilograms. Make sure you've secured the slings around both sections of the lift to prevent it opening when lifting. Then, using a suitable lifting device, proceed to remove the lift from its box. It's advisable to have an assistant to steady the lift while lifting and lowering it to the ground. Once the lift is safely on the ground, you can remove the slings. Now you can remove the lid from the smaller box by peeling back the metal tags. Remove any packaging and lift out the power pack. This is a two person operation. You can now unravel the hydraulic hose and the electric cables. Then, slot the two loose arms into position, placing the washer with a larger ID on the top and the other washer underneath with the locking nut. Tighten the nut by hand. You'll not be able to tighten this properly until the lift is raised in the air, which we'll demonstrate shortly. Once accessible, tighten the nut until the tip of the bolt is protruding through the lock nut. You do not need to torque up this bolt and nut because the arm still needs to be able to move freely, allowing you to swing it in and out. Now fit the adjustable pads by removing the two black grub screws at the end of each arm. Then loosen the grub screws on the side of each pad, which will enable you to slide the pad onto the arm. Now replace the grub screws on the end of the arm. Now focus on the power pack and remove the cover on the rear by removing four screws. This will expose the filler cap to access the tank in order to fill it up with the hydraulic fluid provided. The tank is designed to take eight litres. 
You'll be able to check the level of fluid by screwing the cap back in and ensuring the dipstick is submerged in the oil. Once the tank is filled, connect the hydraulic hose using the quick fit connection and join the two pin electrical cable together. This cable only operates a 12 volt current to energize the safety catch on the lift. Then replace the cover by securing it with the four screws again. You are now ready to connect your lift to mains power and raise it. You will notice the safety catches at the rear of the arms are raised up when the lift is down, which enables you to position the arms correctly. As soon as you raise the lift, these drop down under sprung loaded tension and secure the arm, preventing it from being able to move once the lift is raised. You will also notice the safety catch clicking into the various height positions when you're raising the lift. Once you have raised and lowered the lift once or twice, which is recommended to ensure the hydraulic oil has fully entered the system, you're now ready to load your piece of equipment. The recommended way to load is from the front of the lift, which is the opposite end of the hook eye, and reverse your piece of towed equipment on to avoid the jockey wheel fouling on the lift. Position the piece of equipment centrally over the arms and apply the handbrake or chock the wheels. You can now position the arms correctly swinging them in and out and slide the lifting pads up and down the arm to the nearest position, ideally centralised on a chassis rail or axle beam. Once the sliding pads have been positioned correctly, tighten up the black grub screws on either side to prevent them from sliding. Ensure the piece of equipment is level by adjusting your jockey wheel so you can assess the best pads required and any additional riser posts. This may vary from front to back, depending on the best lifting point. Now switch the power pack on and ensure the green light comes on. Pressing the up button, raise the lift to the first safety catch and press the lock button, which will lower the lift into the groove. Now you can walk around the lift, checking all the lifting pads to ensure that they're centralised onto your lifting point and the load is stable. There's no need to secure the load onto the pads as the arms are locked into position and the weight on the unit you're lifting is sufficient to hold it down, providing the lift is on a level hard surface. When you're happy the load is secure, you can continue to raise the lift to your desired height. Once this is reached, press the lock button again to lower the lift into the nearest safety catch. To lower the lift, press the down button. Please be aware the lift will raise slightly to release the catch first but then the motor will cut out and the lift will begin to lower. Once on the ground, turn the power off at the power pack and remove the lifting pads from the sliding arms.
The locking mechanism will have disengaged with the arms now, so you can swing them back in and out of the way. You're now ready to remove your piece of equipment safely. When pressing the down button, you can adjust the amount of upwards travel before the motor cuts out and begins its descent. Ensuring the power is turned off, remove the cover from the front of the control panel by unscrewing eight screws. Inside, you'll notice a timer dial, which has several settings. The recommended setting is pointing at the number one. Once you've adjusted that, replace the cover and the screws. It's also possible to adjust the speed of descent by adjusting the flow of hydraulic fluid. Simply adjust the centre screw here next to the quick release hydraulic fitting. Your lift will descend slowly when it's unladen, but please don't be tempted to adjust the speed too much at this point because the descent will significantly increase when you have a load on there. Another very useful feature is the ability to move the lift around your workshop, meaning it's portable. You'll notice a hook eye on one end of the lift and the power pack trolley has the hook connection. Simply hook the trolley into the eye on the lift and pull back. This will raise one end of the base from the floor onto some casters at the other end, enabling you to manoeuvre the lift around. Please note that this should only be done on flat and even surfaces. An optional extra for your Tomate trailer lift is the checker plate top, which is for use with smaller equipment. Firstly, ensure the lift is lowered completely to the ground and turn off the power. Then, secure the smaller fixed pads to the lift arms by removing the grub screws at the end of each arm. Now slide the pads on and replace the grub screws. Position the pads towards the outside extremity of each arm. Tighten the two grub screws in the side of each pad to prevent them from sliding. These pads will give the checker plate top a level and firm base to rest upon. Swing the arms in over the top of the main frame so the ends of the arms are roughly level with the outer frame of the lift. These will lock into position as soon as the lift is raised. Using a colleague to assist you, pick up the checker plate top using the handles provided and load it onto the lift from the front with the ramp section facing the front, which is the opposite end to the power pack and the towing eye. Ensure that the ramp section is level and is touching the ground. The checker plate top has been designed to fit comfortably around the lift and you must ensure the rear end of the top is positioned up against the arms as shown. With the power off and the lift still lowered, walk around the top to ensure it's evenly distributed and resting firmly on all four pads. We recommend that you now switch the power on and raise the lift without anything on the checker plate top so that you have visibility of the underside. This is a good visual check and provides reassurance that the top has been positioned correctly on the pads. You are now ready to lower the lift and load the top accordingly. It is important to note that the checker plate top should not be used for raising and lowering trailers, towable plants or any equipment that's wider than the top, causing it to straddle either side. It's been designed to be used for smaller pieces of equipment that are too narrow to be used on the main lift enabling you to work on them at convenient height. If you're loading anything with wheels, you must make sure that any available brakes are applied or the wheels are chopped. Ensure your load is secure and remove any possibility for your item to slide or roll off the edge. If you have any questions about the portable trailer lift, you can email us at sales at ate-uk.com or you can give us a call on 01206 585 439. Thanks for listening to this video.